House 503 and talk about bringing history to life. Last night, the Smithsonian began three nights of projecting a full-scale Saturn V rocket on the Washington Monument. If you can get down here, absolutely do it. This week is the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11, the first time humans walked on the moon, and the National Air and Space Museum wanted to do something really special. We wanted to do something experiential, something that, that would be for the whole family and bring a lot of different people together, and we thought we should simulate what it was like to launch a Saturn V. We realized that the 363-foot Saturn V sitting on the launch pad fit almost perfectly in scale and shape against the Washington Monument, and that the idea of these two symbols of the American experience is a singular opportunity. It's a giant celebration of what, to me, is really one of humanity's greatest achievements. And what we're hoping to do this week is to really get the public to sort of relive something that the majority of them didn't actually witness. One minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. The National Mall is enormous in scale, uh, and even a Saturn V rocket doesn't do it by itself. And we're really fortunate that 59 Productions has worked in this kind of space before, from the Olympic opening ceremonies to events around the world, and have really helped us utilize the nation's front yard on the National Mall. The Washington Monument is this sort of uh, incredible icon within Washington, D.C. Um, and the idea of using it as a projection surface was, was something that really caught our imagination and we just went from there. The ratio of the monument is really tough to work with if you're doing anything other than a rocket launch when it's incredible. <laughs> um, everything on the monument is animated. We've tried to be as accurate as possible. That means we've had to simulate all of the gases, all of the flames, all of the atmospheric effects, all the way up to the moon, which has been built out of data which NASA have taken, so we could rebuild that with accurate craters. It's a really fun but challenging process to build this whole show as accurately as you can, but also telling the story in an exciting way. The Apollo 11 mission story is something that's really well known, and so it was a little bit tricky for us in terms of what's our take on that story? And I really wanted to play out the idea of watching this in a big crowd. It's likely that 20, 30,000 people are going to be standing there watching this thing at the same time. So what could we do with that that you can't do in a cinema or you can't do on TV? So lots of the edited footage focuses on crowds. I think it was that that kind of made the heart of the show and from then we just sort of extrapolated out. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Kennedy's speech has a profound effect on America because it's such a catalyst for rising to this challenge. And it was an immense challenge that required the work of 400,000 men and women across America to pull it off. And one of the things that NASA beautifully managed to do was to film so much of what was going on there. And this is an archive I've been working with on and off for the best part of 25 years now. The challenge was distilling those sort of 10,000 rolls of film down to something that carried us in a pithy piece of storytelling that spanned just a quarter of an hour. I think the show is a real almost overload of information, but I think that that really suits the incredible amount of effort that went into the Apollo program. I feel like for most filmmakers, the area of music is one of the things that's the most mysterious. It's the one thing that you can't really describe. But a part of the interesting discussions I feel like I have with the team at 59 is talking about the emotion, about the drama, about the feeling that we want to convey, and then somehow trying to filter that through my, my own musical voice. There's a bit of a slow burn to the way the themes start. Actually, the first thing we hear is this sort of dreamy um, string choir that sort of wafts in and out of the speech that, that JFK gives. And really, we don't really start to hear the themes until the rocket lifts off, and that's when we really start to have, have a few really powerful ideas. There's um, a little bit of even classical music reference, uh, especially towards the end when 
when Neil is coming down the steps, felt to me a little bit more like in the style of like Stanley Kubrick using the Strauss or something like that. It's almost like this idea that this civilization from this one rock in, in space has gone somewhere else. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. And it was bigger than national identity or patriotism. It was this amazing adventure that the whole human race had taken. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This is the first time that anything like this has been done uh, on the Washington Monument and on the National Mall. And we're fortunate and grateful that each new party that we encountered with this idea loved it as much as we did. We've had to work with so many different DC agencies uh, and federal agencies to not only get the permission to project on the monument, uh, but also to make it all happen. The production side of this project is hugely complex. Uh, the site's very tricky. It's in the middle of a very big city. It's in an extremely public place. And we're asking for really difficult things. We're going to string a fiber optic line across the street. We're going to make the sound of a rocket launch in the middle of Washington, DC. Uh, so there's all sorts of things we're trying to do that are not normal in terms of production, but an important part of telling that story. The production of this event is particularly tricky because of the vast scale of the site that we are on. We are currently sat in the projection compound here, but all the way up further up the mall, we have front of house, we have further screens and, and all the PA system. Um, so just to uh, run cables, we've got like 15,000 feet of fiber and we've had to put down miles and miles of cable ramping to make sure that it's safe for people. You know, it's also hard to try and keep the content secret. The site is very public, so we have to do all of our tests in the middle of the night, we're, we're here till 5 a.m. just to try and keep it as locked down as possible. We don't want to give the game away before the final show. When I saw the rocket for the first time, I was speechless. I almost couldn't believe that we actually had done this. We had pulled it off. So that first moment when I saw the rocket, I instantly just started crying. To me, it was, look what we've achieved. You know, we've achieved something that truly is inspirational. There's something incredibly appealing about telling a story of scale, at scale. There's something about people watching this at night in Washington with 25, 30,000 other people next to them that could be incredibly inspiring. This particular event will be in its scale one of the most awe-inspiring tributes to the Apollo mission that I could possibly think of. To work on a huge show on one of the most important structures in America about one of the most important things humans have ever done is incredible. I think we can look to Apollo and remind ourselves of the power of human ingenuity and what we can achieve when we work together. And so for me, it's an inspiration for what we can do to fix the current problems that the world is facing. I hope that people are excited by this. I hope people are inspired by this. I hope people cry at this. In this celebration, I want some little girl out on the mall tonight watching that Saturn V take off to say, I could be the first girl that walks on Mars. That's what we're hoping to achieve.